Thank you, Lord. Let's go to the Word this morning. All right, hang on. Just hang on to something. It's going to get rough. You ready, Jason? All right, son, here we go. We're going to talk about law and order today. Okay? Is there a sheriff in the house? Is there anybody in the room that was a sheriff? There he is. I knew there was a sheriff in the house. There you go. So don't mess with us. Don't mess with us. I'm about law and order. And I had, some, I had different ones in the audience this morning in the early service. I had a state trooper right up front. I picked on him the whole service. I asked him. I said, hey, you have a sped? You have a sped. Not when you drive in your cop car, but when you're just driving. You have a sped. Speeding. Ain't you ever heard of sped? Is sped not a word? It is in Rockingham. I got a ticket because I sped. <laughs> Maybe that's why he didn't know what I said. <laughs> I just figured that out. But anyway, he wanted to lie. I could tell it. But he was in church. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, yeah, I've, I've, I've been speeding myself. You know, he broke the law. He broke the law. Amen. I said, you wanted to lie, didn't you? And, uh, but he wouldn't do it because he gets struck by lightning in the church house. <laughs> go talk about law and order. Y'all ready? Let's go. But not, not my opinion. Let's go with the Bible. How about that? What's the Bible say? We're in a series called In God We Trust. Volume 12. What does that mean? That means the 12th year I've done these kind of messages on America. George Washington, John Adams, Abraham Lincoln. You can go on PastorGary2OurSermons.com and go to In God We Trust and you can find a lot of these messages and uh, that we've done and we've studied we've tried to do a good job with them well here's one today called law and order it's basically called why do we need law and order why do we need it people want to get rid of it amen just get rid of it we're good that's the problem we ain't good say that with me bad english go ahead we what we ain't good that's why we need law and order that's what the whole message is about okay have you seen some of these crazy people wanting to run things? I'm talking about people that took over stuff, wanting to run things, tear down statues, wanting to run things. I don't think it's going to fly. Amen? We need law and order, guys. Let's go with the message. Let's see what the Bible has to say today. So why do we need law and order? Well, here's a simple answer. Say those three words with me. Because of sin. That's it. That's why we need law and order, because of sin. So I want to talk to you today about sin. They tell you you can't do that in these newfangled churches. Nobody will come. Well, I'm sorry. We need to talk about sin. Now, if we could just wish sin away, boy, wouldn't it be a great thing? Well, that's called heaven. You ain't there yet. You live on a planet where Satan is the prince and the power of the air. And all of us have sinned. And we're going to talk about it today. Let's look at it. This is why we need law and order. Now, we all have it. We all have it. We all do it. We all do it. The word sin, say it with me, is found hundreds and hundreds of times where? In the Bible. But people will still say, well, you don't talk about sin, do you? I mean, you ain't one of those preachers that talks about sin. Well... I mean, if I didn't talk about sin, I'd have to not talk about the Bible. Okay, the Bible's full of sin, full of sinners. Okay, so of course we talk about sin. We are sinners, guys. That's why we need a law and order. Matter of fact, sin hisses at you when you say it. Say it with me. One, two, three, sin. One more time. One, two, three, sin. See, it hisses at you. Why? Because you've been bit by it. We've all been bit by it. We've all sinned. That's why we need law and order. Okay, we're a planet of sinners. We're a country of sinners. We're a state of sinners. We're a county of sinners. We're a town of what? Sinners. We a church of sinners. I have a family of sinners. I have sinned. We've all sinned. That's what we're talking about today. Where did sin first get mentioned? Well, I'm just doing a little study with you, and that's not going to take forever. It was first mentioned in Genesis chapter 4 in our Bible. So first book in the Bible. 
If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. If thou doest not well, say that with me. Sin lies at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. It came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and murdered him. You think murder's a sin? Is that okay? Is that a sin or not? Say. Yeah, I call that. My mother was murdered. Shot six times of the 357 Magnum. I call that sin. We need law and order. You think there are people that still murder people today in America? Yes or no? You think wishing that away is going to make it all go, oh, if we just get rid of the police, they'll stop killing each other. You believe that to be true? It's the dumbest thing you'll ever say. One of the dumbest things. Keep looking. Second time sin was mentioned, Genesis 18. The Lord said, because the cry of what? Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin, there's the word, is, is very grievous. You think of Sodom and Gomorrah, and you can't help but think of it without thinking of homosexuality. Okay? But you know, my daughter helped me one day. She said, Dad, it wasn't just the, the situation of homosexuality in Sodom and Gomorrah. It was sexual assault because she works with Center for Abuse and Rape. And do you think we still have sexual assault in our country? Yes or no? Yes or no? Say. You think if we just say, no police, all that will stop? Yes or no? Yes or no? No. Sin. It's all through the Bible. Well, I could do this all day and we wouldn't get out here to four in the afternoon. But I, so I'll go, I quick fast forward to the end of the, the Bible, the book of Revelation. There it is, chapter 18. Last time it's mentioned. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen, has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every clean and hateful bird. Verse 4, I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you not be partakers of her what? Sins. And that you receive not of her plagues. For her what? Sins have reached to heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. So sin, where is sin, Clark? It's all through the Bible. It's all through the Bible. So we wouldn't be a Bible-teaching church if we didn't talk about sin. That'd be insanity. Amen. We wouldn't understand our culture, our world, or what we're seeing today. So, now here's something unusual as I've studied this subject. <laughs> How many, when you had a baby, when you had a baby, you were fixing to have a baby? We're going to have a baby, okay? How many, when you were having a baby... You didn't have the baby yet. You're going to have the baby. You sent people, we're having baby cards. Let me see some hands. You ever send people cards that said, we're having a baby? Well, that's what the angel Gabriel did. Nice Hallmark card. Better than any Hallmark card. But I bet your card didn't say this. Look at this card. When Jesus was, before he was born, he said to Mary, the angel Gabriel said, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name who? Now, this is in the card. Say it with me. For he shall do what? Save his people from their what? Wow! Now, we don't put that in our little baby card, do we? No. It's a boy. It's a girl. We might even say his name's going to be whatever. But Jesus' card, he's going to save us from our what? We have sinned, haven't we, church? Let's do a quick study. How many would say... I have done wrong at least once in my life. Let me see some hands. Let's go up with the, let's go up with the number. How many say I've done wrong at least 10 times? Let me see that. How many would say I've probably done wrong at least a million times? Let me see some hands. That's still, y'all are just a bunch of heathen. Okay, here we go. Here's the point. We are sinners, sinners sin. That's what sinners do. We need help. We need help. We need the Lord. We need the Lord in our life. My mother was a drunk. She worked hard during the day as a waitress, but would come home every night, go to Jean's Tavern, beep the horn, get a six-pack of Paps Blue Ribbon. And a little bit later, she'd go up that hill and get another one, and then maybe go up one more time and get another one. And that was our life. Then Jesus came. She heard she was loved, sitting there drunk, a man named Billy Graham preaching the gospel on TV, Mama didn't know, but she thought, why not try? 
And we walked to church because we didn't have a car at that time in our life. And three weeks later, she was saved. She put her faith in Christ. Here's the thing about my mama. She never drank another drop. Did she stop becoming, being a sinner? No, she still sinned. But I tell you what, he sure helped her with that sin. Amen? We need the Lord. Amen? Say. How many would say, with a raised hand, Pastor, Jesus has helped me with a sin in my life. Now, I'm still a sinner, but boy, he's, he's helped me with a couple that I can really remember right now. Isn't that good? Let's praise him. This. Well, let's just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Woo! So he saves us from our sins eternally. But I tell you what, he saves us from a lot of crap down here too, doesn't he? That we do or that we can continue to do. God is good to us. So here's something else unusual. So Jesus, before his birth, this crazy card goes out. It's not a card, but you know what I'm saying. But here he, here's John the Baptist. When does when he do this? When Jesus is 30, he's about to start his big earthly ministry. And what does the announcement say? John sees Jesus. This is the most famous preacher during the day, John the Baptist. He sees Jesus coming to him. And he says this, say it with me. Behold, the Lamb of God, help me, which takes away the of the world, I guess. At his birth, it was talking about sin. When he had his entrance into his ministry, his, his big grand entrance was talking about what? Sin. I guess sin is, is real, isn't it? That's a problem. You can't wish it away, guys. Keep looking. Jesus was born. Jesus was crucified. Jesus was buried. Jesus rose from the dead. Why? 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 To deal with what? Got it, church? Do we understand that? That's why I'm a good person doesn't work because that doesn't deal with sin. I'm a Methodist. I'm a Baptist. Say that till the cows come home. It doesn't deal with sin. Gary Clark's my preacher. Good luck with that one. I like Joel Olstein. He's nice. You think Joel can save you from your sins? Yes or no? They quit acting like it. Any TV preacher, anybody, you don't worship them. You don't worship me. You hear me or not? We worship who? Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We've got sin, guys. But why law and order? Well, I'm trying to make the case. Here's the case. Because you're crazy. And I'm crazy. And we have to have some laws or there won't be no order. Yes or no? Did it look orderly as they were tearing down statues recently in America? Did that look orderly? Now let's, you know, get a permit and we're going to, you know, you pull this way and I'll pull that and here it comes. Didn't look very orderly to me, did it? Looks like a riot. That's what happens when sinners do what sinners do, which is sin. And you're no different and I'm no different than they are. If we let our passions become unbridled and just loosened, we'll do that very same thing. Yes or no? How many would be willing to raise a hand? You say, I've done something in my life. I, can, I look back and I can't believe I did that. I was just a crazy person. Let me see some hands. I was just a crazy person. See? That's us. We need the Lord. Keep looking. We've all sinned and wishing it away ain't going to cut it. It's not going to fly. We're all sinners. That's the case today. You might say, I can't believe I got up for this. Well, you're not going to hear it on the evening news, are you? Listen to the evening news. It's like wrong is right and right is wrong. Somebody, and if you shut the churches down, great. They control everything then. Amen. It's crazy. Sin. Sin. What is it? What is sin? Well, it has two dominant meanings. To miss the mark. What does that mean? You've seen bullseyes before? You're shooting on the shooting range. There you go. It's you shooting for that little circle in the middle and you hitting way over here. Yeah, but I got close. You missed, fool. Amen. Say, it's like in football. We got our kicker at the high school. And I love our kicker. He usually does a pretty good job. But listen, it can be nice. It can have great height. It can go long. But if it don't go through the uprights, we get zero. Amen. We've all missed the mark. Any act or attitude of man or woman that does not hit 
the bullseye of God's glory is sin. Amen? That's what the Bible, that's what the word means if you really dial down on it. Lots of scripture, we've all sinned, come short of the glory of God, but we got lots of them later, but I'm not going to spend all day because I got a lot of stuff to cover. What's the other meaning of sin? Say that with me. To do what? To over, overstep a what? See, there's a line right here. You might, let's look at this one. See this line right here? It means like, uh-oh. That's what it means, to overstep a forbidden line. When a man intentionally or accidentally steps over the line of the law of God. Amen? How many have ever stepped over the line? Oh, yeah. So we're sinners, aren't we? Yes or no? Is America full of sinners? So we need the Lord, don't we? We need, call his name Jesus, for he'll save his people from their sins. Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Now, I know our sin is not gone yet. As far as down here in this life, we still do it. But thank God for the blood of Jesus, God's Son, that cleanses us from all sin. Let's thank him for that, too. That's a big one right there. I think he ought to get some praise. Amen. Come on. Thank you, Lord. But as long as we're here, we're still going to sin. A lot of scriptures here, whoever co uh, commits sin transgresses the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. We've got lots of them, and uh, we had a load of them right there. But the bottom line, the Bible says, if you say you have no sin, you are a liar, and the truth ain't in you. Boy, is that clear English or what? I don't understand the Bible. Did you understand that one? Amen. Where did sin begin? It began with Satan. Isaiah 14, how are you fallen from heaven, Lucifer, old son of the morning? You're cast down to the ground, which didst, look at this, say that with me. Weaken the what? Without law and order, are we a weaker nation, yes or no? Is that true or false? Without law and order, are we a weaker nation? Must be the devil's plan. That's his plan, to weaken the nation. We need law and order. It goes on to talk about Satan in Isaiah 14. For thou hast said in your heart, talking about Satan, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Satan talking. Verse 15, say that with me. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the what? Pit. Wow. Wow. I guess it didn't work out too good for him, did it? No, it didn't. It won't work out too good for you and me either. Okay? God wasn't cast down. Guess who was? See? You think if we go against laws, which God creates, God makes laws. Our laws are founded, most of the good, solid laws in this country come right from the Bible. Right from the Bible. You think we go against God's laws, we're going to be exalted? Or do you think the United States is going to go to hell in a handbasket? That's exactly what's going to happen. Just gives you a different perspective on police, doesn't it? That's why the Bible says they are ministers of God. Say that with me. They are what? Ministers of God. Do you have some bad ministers of the gospel sometimes? Sure. Bad ministers of doctoring and physical health. Do you have some bad nurses? Yes or no? But we still, they're ministers, aren't they? Do you have bad uh, ministers of police? Absolutely. Oh, so we don't need doctors. What? We don't need preachers preaching the gospel. What? We don't need police. That's just how stupid that one is, too, when you say that. Amen or oh me? Keep looking. Keep looking. Satan's treachery was unsuccessful, but it did introduce a new evil element into the world, and that was sin. Okay? Second, where did it begin? With mankind. Not going to take all day here. The Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat. For in that day you eat, you shall surely what? That, did it happen? Have we been dying ever since? Absolutely. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, it was pleasant to the eyes, the tree desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, she did eat, she gave it to her husband, he ate also. That's sin. Wherefore, as by one man, that's Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death is passed upon all men, women, boys, and girls, for all have what? You can always tell you're a sinner when you die. If you're a self-righteous, pompous, whatever, 
You're going to learn one day when you're dead. Uh, I guess I wasn't all that good. Wouldn't it be nice to go ahead and learn that now? Humble yourself on the mighty hand of God and he'll lift you up. Call upon the name of the Lord today and you'll be saved. Why hang on to your unrighteousness? When it says what? Filthy what? Rags, the Bible says. In Adam, all die. In Christ shall all be made alive. But in Adam, all die. Satan proposed to Adam and Eve the same plan he adopted. What was his plan? Assume your independence. Depart from God's will and purpose. That's what's happening today in our country. People are going to just rise up and they're going to assume their independence. <laughs> this ain't the battle of 1776, okay? This, is, uh, this, isn't, this isn't right. This isn't right. Going in the streets, looting, that's a sin. Stealing, that's a sin. Well, let's do a quick test. How many have accidentally ever sped before, even though it's not a word? I think it's a word, but whatever. How many have accidentally, you didn't mean it. I'm going to go speed today. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I'm 58 and still talk like a, a lunatic. But anyway, no, a lot of times we've done that. We didn't know. We got a lead foot. Let me ask you this question. How many accidentally ever went into Target and stole a 50-inch big screen television? <laughs> How many accidentally made a Molotov cocktail, threw it into a second-story building, and you accidentally burned down the building? You see what I'm saying? We need law and order, don't we, guys? Yes or no? For accidental things, but pretty much for, yeah, things that we do on purpose, right? We need law and order, don't we? Good stuff. Right from the Bible. Well, with mankind, Satan helped to become just like him. Cursed in what? And if we have our own way as sinners in this country... We will be cursed as a nation, and we will be cast down as a nation. America will not stand without law and order. It won't happen. Y'all got me yes or no? The dumbest people on the planet are people who are cheering this crap on. And if you don't like that, that's your problem. <laughs> dumbest people on the planet. That's like a kid playing with matches in the house. Good, Johnny, go ahead. Burn down our three-story house. No, Johnny needs his butt beat. Oh, that's terrible, beating Johnny's butt. I'd rather his butt get beat than us all die in a family fire. How about that? Amen. I know that's crazy, but it's, it's pretty simple. Isn't it? Yes or no? Come on. Why we need law and order is our message today. If we have anybody watching online, it's probably a miracle now. How can I know I'm a sinner? And we're going to finish with this. How can I know I'm a sinner? Now, all of you know you're sinners, right? How many want me to just skip this part? Just skip it. Just skip it. Put your hand down. He's a pastor, too. Get your stinking hand down. Did you ever tell people they're sinners when they didn't want to hear it? Say, yeah, you did. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Amen. Let's go with it. Now, I think this is sort of interesting. That's why I want to include it in the message. How can I know I'm a sinner? Here's, let's go with this one. Number one, history. 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 Oh, we don't want to read no history books, though. That's not, nah, not, nah, not, nah, not. Nah. We'll rewrite it, make it up. There have been more than 45 billion human beings born since creation. 45 billion. Of those 45 billion, it's estimated one third or 15 billion have been killed by other human beings. That tells me creation, we have a sin problem, don't we? How are they killed? Stabbed, stoned, strangled, shot, gassed, bombed, burned, drowned, hung, buried alive. And you could go ahead and fill in blank after blank after blank after blank after blank after blank how we've treated other human beings. Somebody came up to me after the service today and their, their children now are grown, they're, big, they're involved heavily in the uh, trying to get abortion to be outlawed in this country. And they came up and saw me. And they've got shirts that say a third of my generation are missing. A third of my generation are missing. 
because they've been killed. We're sinners, aren't we, yes or no? Now, that's a political issue. You shouldn't talk about it. That's the whole point. Get me to shut up so you can have your way. That's what we want to do. Isn't that what we want to do, yes or no? Go away, police! It's crazy. We're crazy people. How can I know I'm a sinner? Number two, my conscience, my conscience. We have a, say it with me, we have a built-in what? How many... You, ever, you did something wrong. Let's go ahead and say it was bad wrong. It was bad wrong. And you knew it was bad wrong, and you did it anyway. Raise your hand with me. Go up. You did it anyway. Oh, no, my sin gauge won't work, and you lying like a dog. You know what I'm saying? Now, here's the, here's the problem, though. We are raising a whole generation, culture after culture now, that doesn't hear messages like this. And that's really scary. That's really scary when your conscience is defiled and doesn't work well. Amen or oh me? And see, that's the thing about police and law and order is that, boy, they, they, how many have ever seen a policeman that helped your conscience come back to life real fast? You, you ever seen something? You ever been thinking about doing wrong or something? You know, a police man. Okay, right, but, yeah. Amen, I did it yesterday. I do it often. I'm, no, I'm, I'm not some great guy. I was riding yesterday in my Jeep. It's a little hard to get that seat belt on. So, ah, forget it. You know, and, there, and sure enough, there he is, there police. And them seat belts in them Jeeps stick right out like right here. I don't have no doors or anything. That thing's flopping saying, arrest me, arrest me, give me a ticket. <laughs> and so I grab it and try to pull that sucker. And I finally got it and I got it on. Why did I do that? Well, my conscience said so. Yes or no, amen. Just a simple thing. So that's what we have. It can be defiled but not denied, the conscience. We all have one. So that's number two. Number three, how can I know I'm a sinner? Religion, religion, religion. Not just true religion. Jesus Christ died on the cross, rose from the dead. That's, that's the only true religion. But other religions, heathen religions, testify of a universal consciousness of what? Yeah, they do crazy things. They're trying to uh, reconcile with some supreme being. It's that whole idea that the gods are angry. And so they'll sacrifice a child or something this or something other, another way. Religion tells us there's a problem we're trying to fix, but only Jesus Christ, faith in him, can fix it. Okay, keep looking, keep looking. So, number four, how can I know I'm a sinner? The Bible. Say that with me, the what? I'm a Bible-believing Christian, but I'm not a sinner. You are not a Bible-believing Christian, and you're not saved. There's no way you can be saved if you don't know you need Jesus as a Savior. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If I confess with my mouth Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, I shall be what? Saved. Saved from what? Saved from your goodness? Saved from your what? Sin. Okay? We got all kinds of scripture. Rod, just, just show them the different ones. I, I don't want to read them all. I ain't got all day. Keep going. Look, 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 look. I could have gone all day. I could, and I could do this to four o'clock. All day long. All day long. Look at them. Here they go. Boom, boom, boom. The Bible. Number five. How could I know I'm a sinner? We're almost done. My kids. Absolutely. We get so excited when we have a baby, and we should. We should. It's a beautiful new life. But we soon realize, oh my gosh, what is this? It's like a little savage. These are crazy things, aren't they? Yes, they're crazy. You don't have to teach them. It's a universal thing. The good needs to be taught to these little kids. You've got to teach them good. Why? Because the bad comes what? Absolutely. They don't get their way, they what? What do they do if they don't get their way? They pitch a fit, they scream, they cry. Ah! I mean, how can that voice come out of something so little? Amen. They, they get a little toy. They're just a little, they got the little toy. 
And you try to teach them, no, you need to share with Johnny. And instead of sharing, they scream, it's blank. No! Your kids, all you that are thinking you're not sinners, if you're old enough, you already know you are. Right? Yes or no? But sometimes as young, we're, un we're idealistic. Let's do away with the police. Yeah. Let's go smoke weed. Live happily ever after. Listen, that is not the real world. When you have a little baby or two, you're going to go, oh my gosh, was mama ever right? Amen? So this is how we know that we're sinners. It's in our DNA. I got to quit, Rod. There's not much more, is there? Okay, I'm done. This is why we have civil government, guys, because we're sinners. Did you get the message today? Say this with me. Would you say it loud? I need law and order. Let's thank the Lord for his word this morning. That's just the word today. We quit early, though. Amen. Come on. Boom. I need it. I need it. Fellowship meets every Sunday morning on our beautiful 15 and a half acre campus in the Bullseye of Rotunda West, Florida at 140 Rotunda Boulevard West. Early worship begins at 8.30 a.m. with our morning worship service beginning at 10.30 a.m. Between these two services we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you are looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would just like to pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fcinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.